welcome back to my channel. Um, for those of you who are new, my name's Lauren. I'm a physio, uh, owner of Evolve Rehab and Coaching, and also I have hip dysplasia, and this channel is about my journey with hip dysplasia and uh, some other illnesses or conditions that I have. Um, I'm gonna be talking about hypermobility spectrum disorder, or HSD. It's also known as joint hypermobility, um, ligamentous laxity, generalized hypermobility disorder. It's had, had a few names, but the key theme is hypermobility. Um, so I have joint hypermobility syndrome. And what that means is that my ligaments are a bit lax, or they're too stretchy. And that's due to, it's a genetic thing and it's due to collagen in my ligaments um, just being slightly defective. Um, I think there hasn't actually been a confirmed, like they don't know the gene that's behind it or exactly what's wrong with the collagen, but it means that the ligaments are stretchy. And that is a problem because all your joints are held together with ligaments. So ligaments join bone to bone. So every single joint has heaps of ligaments all over it and they help to keep the joint stable. So the ligaments do stretch and move a little bit, um, which is normal and that's what you want. Otherwise your joint would be rigid and wouldn't move, but they should only move a certain amount. Now, if you have joint hypermobility disorder, they move further than they should your joints move further than they should because your ligaments are stretching too much. So it can cause subluxation, which is where the uh, joint moves. It's sort of like a partial dislocation. So the joint, say, say my finger, like um, the finger moves in the socket too far uh, far than it should and it's almost coming out of the joint but it doesn't fully dislocate which is where um, say like you would have seen a shoulder dislocates where it fully pops out of the joint capsule and it's sort of sitting on the outside so that's a dislocation so hypermobility can cause dislocations and subluxations not always um, so you can have just subluxations and not dislocations. Some people, it's, because it is actually a spectrum, some people don't have subluxations and are just a bit more stretchy. And some people will, at, like at the other end of the spectrum, have like severe dislocations and it actually makes life quite difficult. Um, now there's another condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. There's also some other connective tissue disorders, but that are associated with hypermobility as well. So, but there, if you have hypermobility syndrome, it doesn't mean you have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or another connective tissue disorder. Um, but conversely, if you have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, or specifically the hypermobility type, you have to be hypermobile. So it works one way, but not the other. Today I'm gonna to talk about hypermobility spectrum disorder and how it's diagnosed. So I've actually written a blog post on this. So I'll share the link in the, um, the description. So I've got my blog post link in there and also I'm gonna link some relevant websites on hypermobility and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So the main criteria that is used for testing if you have hypermobility uh, spectrum disorder is called the Baton scale. And it's a scale of nine, it tests nine joints. And so your maximum score is nine out of nine. <laughs> and that is a positive, so nine joints that are positive for hypermobility. So in order to be classified as having hypermobility syndrome, you need to score five 
or above out of nine. There are some conditions where they are except four, um, but the standard is five out of nine. So one of the joints in the Baton scale is the finger, the little finger. So uh, if you hold your hand flat, will your little finger bend back to 90 degrees angle? So this angle here being 90 degrees. So if you can do that with your little finger, then that is a positive score. So they test uh, both sides because you're not necessarily the same on both sides. So for this side, I get one point. For this side, I also get one point. Next is your thumb. Can your thumb be pulled back to touch your forearm? Now, I actually can't do this, which is good. <laughs> I have done it previously though, but currently I can't do it. I may be able to force it, but that's not ideal. So it's more, anyway, the scale is more, can you do it? And it should be reasonably easy. Um, so I don't get a point for that, but if you could touch your thumb to your forearm, then that counts as a point. And then on the other side, can you touch your thumb to your forearm? And no, I can't on this side either. Next is the elbows. So if you straighten your elbow, is the angle here greater than 10 degrees? And as you can see, mine is, my elbows are pretty mobile. And the other one, yes, <laughs> even more. So more than 10 degrees. So that's two more points. So I now have four points. Next point is for, can you touch your palms flat on the floor and keep your legs straight when you bend over? No, I can't. However, there is a clause, could you ever? And yes, before my hips got really bad or really symptomatic, yes, I could easily touch my palms of my hands to the floor. That was something I could always do up until my mid twenties super easily. So I do get a point for that. So I'm now at five, confirming that I have hypermobility spectrum disorder. So the next two joints are the knees and again, one for each side. So it's, can your knee extend so that your greater, your extension is greater than zero? And no, I can't. So my knee is just a normal straightness. I will insert a clip of a knee hyperextending so you can see what that looks like. And this side. So that is how you diagnose if you have joint hypermobility spectrum disorder. Ideally, to be officially diagnosed, it has to be done by a medical professional, but obviously these tests are easy to do to yourself, so you can do them at home just to see if you have a suspicion that you might have joint hypermobility spectrum disorder. Like I said, don't force the joints. It's not good for them to be pushed back into extreme range of motion. So just see how far you can get naturally if you did want to check it yourself. But ideally, if you're concerned about this, you should see a health professional, or even your GP. There are other joints, obviously, that can be affected. It does, as it is a systemic condition, it affects the whole body. So some people actually would not score as positive on the Baton scale, but they may still be hypermobile based on other joints. So that's something that you can also discuss with your health professional if it's something you're concerned about. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Please like, comment and subscribe because it really helps me to get my message out there. I really want to help other people who are suffering with similar uh, musculoskeletal conditions to me. It can be quite a lonely journey and um, personally I got spent a number of years uh, trying to get diagnosis and being sort of dismissed by healthcare professionals. So just having uh, 
If I, it would have been really helpful for me if I had found people sharing a journey similar to myself. So I'm hoping that it will help others. So please do like, comment, share and subscribe and it will really help me to get my message out there.